Hi, I'm Johnny Miller, and I've been asked by the United States Golf Association to introduce the official video of our national championship. It's been made possible by a grant from my friends at Rolex. I take pride that the proceeds from this sale of this video are being used by the USGA to support their junior golf programs, and copies are provided free of charge to a variety of high school golf programs. So thanks to the USGA and Rolex, I know you'll enjoy our national championship. As the 1998 golf season reached its midpoint, the world's best players converged at San Francisco's Olympic Club for the 98th edition of the U.S. Open, and the top contenders were in mid-season form. Fred Couples was leading the U.S. Tour with two wins and well over a million dollars in earnings. Tiger Woods had ended a dry spell with a convincing victory in May. And red-hot David Duvall had won five of his last 16 events. Justin Leonard, Davis Love, and Ernie Els all had notched victories to go with the major championships they had won a year earlier. And at Augusta, Marco Mira had broken through for the biggest win of his career. From a European tour, Colin Montgomery and Jose Maria Olathabal were early winners. And young Lee Westwood had opened the month of June with back-to-back -back victories. Meanwhile, at the unlikely age of 48, Tom Watson had gained his 43rd career victory. And even 58-year-old Jack Nicklaus, with a sixth-place finish at the Masters, had shown he had plenty of magic left. The United States Golf Association presents the 98th United States Open Championship. A climactic battle between two former champions. Perfect lead. Jansen's Olympic win. Hi everybody, I'm Dan Hicks and I'm standing near the 18th fairway here at the Lake Course at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. And it is here that the 1998 U.S. Open champion will be crowned. And the one who prevails will have to conquer what some say is the longest short course in the world. Indeed, the great Bobby Jones called Olympic the best in the West. The lake course was designed in 1924 by Sam Whiting and Willie Watson. Prior to the 1955 U.S. Open, Robert Trent Jones stretched and tightened the challenge. At 6,800 yards, Olympic demands accuracy because its tree-lined fairways are bordered by menacing rough. Rarely will these long, thick blades relinquish an errant shot. But Olympic is exactly what an open course should be, tough but fair. Though bordered by Lake Merced on one side and the Pacific Ocean on the other, the lake course has no water. There's only one fairway bunker at the par 4 6th and no out of bounds on the entire course. Still, the man who hears the final applause at this amphitheater green will surely have earned his right to the Havemeyer Trophy. For in three previous Opens at Olympic, only four players have bettered par. And on top of that, an almost surreal atmosphere pervades the fairways and greens here at Olympic Club and brings with it a special challenge for the top players because in the three previous U.S. Open staged here at Olympic Club, the underdog has prevailed. So as we get set for the 98th edition of the Open, can we again expect the unexpected? 156 players made the final field at Olympic, including a dozen former champions and a half dozen amateurs. There was San Francisco's fame morning fog filling the air as play began on Thursday, and the cool conditions were in stark contrast to the sultry heat of one year ago. But surely the memories remain warm for Ernie Els, who became the first international player since 1910 to win two U.S. Opens. Last year at the Congressional Country Club, Els prevailed in a dramatic final round battle with Paula Montgomery, Tom Lehman, and Jeff Magger. The pivotal moment came at the treacherous 17th. As the others faltered, L stuck this majestic five iron that set up a rock solid par and its second victory in four years. But this year, things were a bit more difficult for Ernie as he was nursing a bad back. And the going got tough early. This was his tee shot at the par 3 third on Thursday. 
Miraculously, he was able to get up and down from there, but he opened his title defense with a round of 75. Also off to a ragged start was Tiger Woods, as his biggest problems came on the greens. At the ninth, his first putt was above the hole, and he had this to save par. He would miss that one as well. The result, a four putt, a double bogey six, and a less than delighted 22-year-old. Like most of the field, Tiger failed to find the green at the par 4 17th and paid the price. He made bogey and finished with a 74. It was also rough going for three-time U.S. Open champion Hale Irwin, who struggled to a round of 80. And the defending PGA champion Davis Love III could muster no better than a 78. Meanwhile, attention began to focus on Payne Stewart. A day of steady play had taken him to one over par as he stood over his 9-iron approach to the par 5 16. And that birdie putt would take him quickly to 2 under. The 1991 Open champion was about to go on a roll. The toughest hole of the day was number 17, yielding only five birdies. But the most dramatic of them all was surely this one from 45 feet. At the 18th, Stewart's tee shot found the rough. So I just opened up an eight iron, tried to hit a high cut. And it, I hit it really solid, and it ended up hitting on the bank and getting a, getting a nice bounce. And so from 12 feet, he had a chance for his third birdie in a row and the day's best round of 66. The putt was downhill, side hill, and lightning fast. I, that putt was, after I saw Hales run it about six feet by, I just uh, went for <laughs> ultra. Just let's ease this one on down there a little bit. A few other players turned heads on Thursday. John Daly matched Stewart's second nine score of 32 and posted a round of 69. Europe's top contender, Colin Montgomery, was at even par 70. also at even par. Lee Jansen, the 93 champion, didn't have quite the start he wanted. But he later told the press he was relatively happy. Said Jansen, no matter who wins the U.S. Open this week, he's going to have to have a round of one, two, or three over par. So I felt pretty good about a 73. Tom Lehman had plenty to feel good about on Thursday. The gallery favorite was one over par when he stroked this birdie putt at number 15. Lehman followed that with another birdie at 16. And then after a perfect drive at 18, he struck one of the finest approaches of the day. I started swinging pretty well towards me. They hit a lot of really solid shots uh, online, uh, right where I was aiming. And then the putting stroke got great all day. So, you know, to finish putting the way that I'm putting, you know, I'm going to be in good shape. Talk about gallery favorites. No player got a warmer reception at 18 than Jack Nicholas. And the Golden Bear gave them even more reason to cheer. Check out this approach to the 18th. Closing birdie meant a 73 for the man playing in this championship for a record 42nd consecutive year. Four decades to catch Jack for these three talented rookies. 19-year-old Matt Kuchar thrilled the galleries with a round of 70. And Casey Martin made history as the first player to use a golf cart in a national championship. He opened for the 74. 
And Joe Duran, a Nike Tour veteran, surprised everyone by shooting 31 on the front nine, the lowest score on either side all day. Although he stumbled a bit coming in, Duran had one more moment of glory at the 15th. He finished with a 68, good enough for a tie for third. Remarkably, the man in second place was paired with Durant, Mark Carnival. This approach, the shot of the day at number 17. A two iron from 215 yards. The birdie there took Carnival to three under, and with a par at 18, he went into the clubhouse one shot off King Stewart's lead. Four others were a stroke back, as only seven players were able to break par. Andrew McGee joined Montgomery, O'Hara, and Kutcher at even par, along with Tom Kite and David Obrin. While pre-championship favorites Justin Leonard and Phil Mickelson stayed in touch at plus one. Each spring, more than 800 courses throughout the United States hold local and sectional qualifying rounds for the U.S. Open. This year saw roughly 7,000 players try to squeeze into the 89 available spots at Olympic. They came from far and wide, from New Jersey to California, all with the dream of competing on golf's grandest stage. The U.S. Open is just that, open to any professional or amateur with a handicap index of 2.4 or less. Among the qualifiers this year were several familiar faces. Recent winners on the PGA Tour, including Craig Stadler, Fred Funk, Trevor Dodds, Rocco Mediate, and Billy Mayfair. You want to go out and play the best you can and qualify. I mean, there's, you know, you don't have to win. All you want to do is qualify, but uh, you know, that's why it's the United States Open. It's an open championship. Uh, anyone can play, anyone can get in it. There was still one spot up for grabs in the qualifier at Rockville, Maryland, when Ted O played this pitch shot to the final hole. It would end up getting him into the open. One of the better known entrants in the sectional qualifier in Cincinnati was Casey Martin, who rode his own card over the 36 holes. Martin was well on his way to qualifying until he bogeyed the par four last hole to force a five-man playoff. But on the second playoff hole, he drained this 25-footer to earn a spot at Olympic. I putted well today, except for maybe just a couple putts, and uh, I'm glad that last one went in. I'm going to fly around the open, so I don't think I'll need a cart. I'll be so pumped. Yes, for a fortunate few, the qualifying process brings the fulfillment of a dream. While for most, it's wait until next year. Some qualifiers remained in the hunt as action was underway in round two. Mark Carnival slipped to a 73. He did stay among the top ten on the leaderboard, though, after two rounds. As did Joe Durant at plus one after 36. Meanwhile, another open rookie, Lee Porter, finished Friday with a flourish. A spectacular Eagle 2 at the 18th gave Porter a 67, tied for the low round of the day. One under par for the championship. Also at one under par was the young U.S. Amateur champion, Matt Kuchar, thanks to shots like this one at the par 315. Boy, it was nice to regroup here. Really accelerated through. And to have that go in was just such a great momentum saver. Kuchar, whose exuberant caddy happens to be his father, Peter, had tied for 21st at the Masters and seemed en route to an even better finish at the Open. Well, Jack Nicholas had thrilled the 18th hole gallery in the first round, and on Friday, he did it again. posted a two-day total of 147, just enough to make the open cut for a record 35th time. And a couple other veterans had good rounds on Friday. Nick Price got things off to a fast start with this eagle chip at the first. With a 68, he moved into contention at 
plus one. Ernie Els got his back nine off with a bang. This was his approach to the par four ten. Els would make the cut comfortably at 145. Bob Tway had opened the championship with a 68, and on Friday, he continued his strong play, making this birdie at number seven look easy. After two rounds, Tway was tied for second at two under. Tied with a perennial open contender, Jeff Magger, who, like Tway, showed a deft touch on his wedge approach to the short par 4-7. Maggard finished fourth last year at Congressional. And the man who finished third at Congressional? Tom Lehman was lurking in a group at 143. But the player handling all 18 holes the best was unquestionably Payne Stewart. On Friday, he wasted no time in extending his lead. A birdie at the first. another birdie at the difficult second and then played his tee shot to the third. He would get a very fortunate bounce. And a chance at a U.S. Open record tying six birdies in a row counting the three from yesterday. And suddenly, he was at seven under for the championship and in the lead by four. By the 17th tee, however, he would give two of those shots back. And when his approach missed the green, he faced a near impossible up and down. shot out of the deep rough left the determined steward with a chance to save par. Even with a bogey, Stewart still had the lead by two. And at 18, had a chance for birdie. But instead, watched helplessly another victim of a controversial hole location. I actually thought it would probably finish three foot, four foot below the hole, and all of a sudden it's 20. And I, I commented to, to our official walking with us that I, I really feel that that pin's unfair. open play as the man who led from wire to wire at Hazeltine in 1991. At the 72nd hole, he needed this five-foot par to force a playoff with Scott Simpson. And so after matching totals of 274, six under, they returned on Monday for 18 more. Stewart seeking an open to go with the PGA Championship he had already won two years earlier, and Simpson seeking his second open title in five years. Once again, it came down to a five-footer on 18. This time for victory, the biggest victory of Payne Stewart's career. But back at Olympic on day two, there was more frustration than celebration. For Tiger Woods, putting continued to be his nemesis. Through two rounds, he had taken 65 putts.
championship. I really started out the day just hoping to shoot anything in the red numbers. And, you know, three over par yesterday, I was not upset at all. And, uh, anything near even par after Saturday, I think it's got a great chance to win. So I'm, I'm ahead of the game as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I feel like tomorrow I'll just go out the same game plan. Hit the fairways, hit the greens, and, and uh, try not to make any over par scores. Jansen finished with the day's best score of 66 and moved into a tie for fourth, two behind Stewart. Only seven players were in par or better, but Nick Price, Brad Faxon, and Stewart Sink all improved their positions to plus one. David Duvall, Tom Lehman, and Jesper Parnovic were still very much in the hunt. But those at 145 and higher, even the best of them, had some work to do. Meanwhile, Tom Watson led a list of highly regarded players who failed to make the 36-hole cut. Hale Irwin fell one shot short despite a 68 on Friday. The frustration continued for 95 U.S. Open champion Corey Pavin in the midst of a disheartening slump. And the last man to win back-to-back -back opens, Curtis Strange, missed the cut for the second straight year. Davis Love's hopes had been high until a week or so before the Open when he strained his back. He had to curtail his practice rounds and on both Thursday and Friday struggled with his swing. The problem for Nick Falda was not his swing, but his putting stroke, as it had been all year. When the two and three footers fail to fall, any round can be an exercise in frustration. And this open featured plenty of storylines and a worldwide press contingent of over 500 was on the job, assembling the words and pictures to send to their hometown readers, as well as an international television audience in the millions. The U.S. Open has become one of the most important events on the global sports calendar, following the golfers every move. A third straight day of perfect San Francisco weather greeted the cut survivors on Saturday as the bell sounded for round three. And the fastest man out of the blocks was Tom Lehman. He birdied his first two holes, and this was for three in a row. His last three opens, Lehman's Saturday scores have been 67, 65, and 68. Lee Jansen's start had not been strong, a bogey six at the first hole. Vinny drove into the rough at number two, so this was his third shot from a sand-filled divot. And what a shot it turned out to be. Jansen was able to save par. Despite his inexperience, Joe Durant seemed in control. After a fine tee shot in the third, this for birdie. Meanwhile, on the practice tee, the two players in the final pairing put the finishing touches on their preparation. Kane Stewart reached the first and two and had this for an opening eagle. Suddenly, Maggard was three shots behind and needed this birdie to get one back. And he was up to the challenge. Bob Tway birdied number two, and when both Stewart and Maggard bogeyed the third goal, Tway moved into second place alone, just one back. Well, without question, one of the most popular spots at Olympic was the U.S. Open merchandise tent, a marvel of retail marketing where golf fans could purchase countless items of apparel and other products, all with the official logo of the 1998 U.S. Open. And from the time the doors first opened until they closed on Sunday night, 
the souvenirs were literally flying off the shelves. And Matt Kuchar continued his soar on Saturday as well, the only amateur to make the cut. Nick Price had gained no ground through eight holes, but at the night, he put himself in position to attack the flag. And attack he did. This for a front nine 34. And Price returned to even par for the championship. Steve Stricker had started the day at four over, but was two under for his round when he gave himself this chance for birdie at 14. Stricker would post a 69, one of only three subpar rounds on Saturday. But Payne Stewart was still very much in control as he played his tee shot at the par 3 8th. struggled to a 37, and Bob Tway had his own problems. This was for Bogey. Instead, a double bogey six went on Tway's card, and he dropped back to even par. No one on the leaderboard was putting the Olympic greens better than Matt Kuchar. But that cup somehow eluded him, and he dropped to one over. But others had begun to move up the ladder, notably Lee Jansen. After making three bogeys on the front nine, he rebounded at the 10th. But even with that birdie, Jansen was still five shots behind the leader. Tom Lehman had failed to gain any ground in his first 13 holes. But with that type of shot making, your fortunes can change in a hurry. As the leaders headed into the back nine, Payne Stewart remained in firm command with a four-shot lead and the distinction of being the only player under par. At the 11th, Jeff Maggard's first putt had sailed 10 feet past the hole, so this was to save par. And that was the first of four bogeys made by Maggard on the back nine. Few on the leaderboard were gaining ground on the way to the clubhouse. Nick Price missed his chance here at 15. He was at plus two after three days. Bob Tway faltered at 13. He would suffer his first over par round of the championship, a 73. Little known Lee Porter had stood up bravely for most of the three days, and this iron shot to 14, although not quite as accurate as the one he pulled out at 18 on Friday, proved he wasn't backing off. But he lost his form at the last two holes, where a pair of double bogeys dropped him to 10. The magic of Matt Kuchar was alive and well when he played this approach to 14. of the gallery. This was his first real birdie opportunity of the day. Perhaps some youthful aggressiveness. Now he needed to bear down to save par. But it would be the first of four straight bogeys for Matt incoming score of 40 dropped him to plus five.
But as almost everyone else was faltering, Tom Lehman was once again making his patented Saturday charge. Lehman was one under par for the day when he struck this pitching wedge to 18. This to tie for the low round of the day. A magnificent 68. And so for the fourth straight year, Tom Lehman has played himself into the thick of the U.S. Open with one round to go. Meanwhile, back at the 15th, Lee Jansen had a birdie opportunity. Just prior to the Open, Jansen had visited putting guru Dave Pels, and when Pels saw Lee's stroke, he said, don't change a thing, go out and trust it. same fate that had befallen Lee Porter. While Bob Tway had gone from two under at the start of the day to one over at the end. Only Lee Jansen seemed to be holding steady, but at 17, he met his match. His three iron was on track, but raced through to the rough. Jansen had saved himself time and again this week, but not this time. His score at 17, a double bogey six. And with a par at the last, he would post a 73, two over for the championship. Moments later on the same hole, it looked as if Stewart might give another shot back to the field. But a superbly judged pitch shot resulted in a par four. where the unexpected has occurred, particularly when the USGA comes to town. In the first Open held here back in 1955, Ben Hogan seemed on the verge of a record fifth title until little-known Jack Fleck sank this birdie putt at the final green to force an 18-hole playoff the next day. To the astonishment of all, Hogan fell two behind by the turn and never caught up as Fleck played the round of his life to become the Open's ultimate dark horse champion. Seven years later, the Open returned to Olympic, and this time, Arnold Palmer squandered a seven-shot lead over the last nine holes. Once again, an extra day was needed, and this time, the upset victor was Billy Casper, who won the playoff by four. Then in 1987, Tom Watson took the lead into the final day, but soft-spoken Scott Simpson wasted no time in catching him, with this birdie at the first. They battled back and forth all day long, and on 14, Watson trickled this one home to even things up with four holes to go. But Simpson wouldn't be denied. With birdies at 14, 15, and here at 16, he became the third surprise champion at the Olympic Club. So can Payne Stewart do what three previous Hall of Famers could not? Can Payne Stewart go wire to wire again? The next 18 holes will tell. Lee Jansen arrived with 
wife Beverly for the final round. Open Sunday was also the 20th birthday for Matt Kuchar. And a special day for fathers everywhere. Happy Father's Day to my dad. I love you. Well, Paul Azinger, a father of two, gave his kids something to be proud of when he played the first nine holes in 32 and then shaved another stroke off par before he came to this twisting birdie putt at the 72nd hole. Part of a 65, the lowest round of the championship. And it jumped Zinger from 54th place at the start of the round into a tie for 14th. Meanwhile, the final two players had not even teed off. And on the practice tee, they presented a sharp contrast in styles, both in their apparel and their golf swings. Well, the birthday boy gave himself an early present to open, a chance for eagle at the first. Instead, he'd settle for an easy tap-in birdie. Lee Jansen seemed focused and ready as he and his caddy made their way to the first tee. But for Bob Tway, the start was a bit shaky. Tway fell quickly to two over par, five strokes off the pace. As Payne Stewart walked through the gauntlet of well-wishers and route to the first tee, he seemed to have something on his mind. Was he perhaps looking for something? Indeed he was, a place to do a bit of last-minute stretching. After all, when you're about to tee off in the last group, the U.S. Open Sunday is all about staying loose and comfortable. Scottsdale, Arizona, Tom Lehman. It was Lehman's fourth straight year in the final group on Sunday. He had finished third, tied for second, and third in the last three opens. Teeing up on the left side, he set himself up for his favorite shot, a draw. But this one wouldn't cooperate. into trouble on the right. A shaky start, but ultimately not a damaging one as Payne gave himself this chance to save par. salvage his par. But instead, he took a bogey six on one of the easiest holes on the course. Lee Jansen had lost a stroke in the second hole and was about to lose another with his tee shot at the par three third. began the day five shots off the lead and had hoped to make something happen early but he could do no better than pars at holes one and two and then number three put him on the defense a fine recovery but again just a par
So with his pursuers scrambling over the early holes, Stewart upped his lead to five. And at number five, Lee Jansen had the week's most bizarre experience. The fifth hole, I hit my forward off the tee to the right and uh, hit the trees on the way down to the ball. The uh, marshals were looking around frantically, not finding it. And then, uh, so I was thinking maybe it stayed in the tree. And then someone from the other side of the fairway yelled that it stayed in the tree that they had it with their binoculars. So uh, before I could get back to the tee, the ball fell out of the tree. Jansen took full advantage of his blessing, getting back into play on his next shot, onto the fringe on his third, and into the hole on his fourth. Thus, were a double bogey or worse that seemed certain, he escaped unscathed with a par. For three rounds, Payne Stewart had had his share of close calls with the trees and rough of Olympic. But at the fourth hole, his luck began to run out. That would result in a bogey five, his third bogey of the week on this hole. On the same hole, Lehman left himself a devilish 15-footer for par. And he gave it just enough. After three straight years of agonizing near misses, there is no question who is the people's choice to win this Open. Nick Price missed the green at the fifth, but caught a good lie. in his fifth straight par. But he was in search of birdies. Meanwhile, Jansen bogeyed two of the first three holes. But the short seventh hole presented a good birdie chance. And after positioning himself perfectly with a three iron off the tee, he took dead aim with this sand wedge. It's only about six feet from the pen, but as Lee knows, it's an extremely treacherous six feet. Nevertheless, back to two over for the championship, four shots off the lead. Moments later, Bob Tway attacked number seven. sink that one to join Jackson at plus two. At the same seven, Payne Stewart left his approach on the back tier of the green and paid a U.S. Open style penalty. Now, he had an uphill five-footer for par. strokes of the week. Suddenly the control and confidence Payne had displayed had begun to wane. And so had his lead. Now just three over Jansen, Tway, and Lehman. And four over Price. So the final stage of the 98th U.S. Open had become essentially a four-man race. Payne Stewart, hoping to hold his lead just a bit longer and join the elite group of two-time champions. Bob Tway, the man who had won the 86th PGA Championship by catching Greg Norman in the stretch run, was looking to summon the same finishing kick. Tom Lehman, so close so often, and wanting this title more than any other. And finally, the man who five years earlier had come from behind to edge Payne Stewart for the Open title, Lee Jansen. And Jansen was on the attack. After a drive into the dead center of the 11th fairway, he had an 8-iron to the flag. Not a great shot, but watch the result. The type of good fortune that helps win championships.
keeping your emotions in check is the hard part. And, uh, you know, after 11, I realized I had a chance to win, and I, I kept thinking about, you know, this is the U.S. Open. I have a chance to win. I have a chance to win. I had to keep reminding myself that it only takes one shot if I lose focus that I could ruin any chance of winning. Back at the 10, Stewart had missed both the fairway and the green. But not the hole. And watch the way he snatches that ball out. He wasn't ready to give anything away. Matt Kuchar had dropped out of contention at 9 over par, but at the green at the par 3 15th, he gave himself one more reason to smile. His devoted dad to share Father's Day. But the Kutchers weren't the only father and son enjoying the Sunday together. Meanwhile, Jansen was taking aim at the pen at the par 3 13th. some major momentum in full gear. And suddenly, this open had boiled down to a battle between two players. With Jansen two under for the day and Stewart two over, the gap between them was just a single shot. From this point on, it would be a question of who could summon the shots and cope with the pressure of the open's final hour. At the 12th hole, Stewart hit a perfect tee shot. But ended up with an awful result as his ball settled into the center of a sand-filled dip. After a routine par at 14, Jansen stepped up to the 15th, a hole he had birdied on both Friday and Saturday. On target again. Since the fifth hole, Lee had missed only one green. Meanwhile, Stewart had a problem. I hit the fairway, but I was in the bunker. <laughs> right in the middle of a sand divot uh, and didn't play a very good shot. And now he was in a real bunker. Up ahead, Jansen gave his birdie putt a roll. Read it wide left. Still, his par was assured. Payne, however, left himself a bit of work at number 12. And that just sneaked off at the last second. So, with that bogey, Payne Stewart returned to even par for the first time since hole number six on Thursday. And at the same time, he relinquished sole possession of the lead. Jansen and Stewart, all even, with Lee facing the last three holes and paying the last six. Five years earlier, when the U.S. Open was last played on the lower course of Baltus Raw Golf Club in New Jersey, Lee Jansen took the 54-hole lead by one shot over Payne Stewart. Paired together on Sunday, they battled all afternoon. Then, 
Jansen birdied 14 to move ahead by one, and at 16, play the shot of the championship. A birdie two. The margin remained two strokes until the 18th green, when Payne had this chance to tie it all up with an eagle. And came that close. Lee needed a two-putt from here for victory, but he took the title in style. With a birdie, it gave him a 72-hole total of 272, matching Jack Nicklaus's all-time record. his tee shot to Olympics 13. It seemed to be online all the way. But a bit too strong. And that was the fourth straight green he missed on the back nine. It would lead to yet another bogey. And as Jansen secured his par at the 16th, moved into first place all by himself with just two holes to go. But Ping had five holes to work with, and at 14, he got back on the attack. For the first time all week, he was the pursuer, the underdog, and perhaps more than before, the gallery was urging him on. putt was uphill and slightly right to left. The kind of putt that good players like to have. And Payne made the most of it. Back in a tie for the lead, and if determination means anything, don't count Payne out. And so despite being three over par for the day, Payne Stewart was still in hot pursuit of his second Open Championship. Lee Jansen also wanted open number two, and he wasn't letting up. When this thing is over, you can relax and think about all the great things, but, you know, every shot, if you don't give your full attention to it, you're not going to win this thing. Well, the tee shot at 17 got Lee's undivided attention, and he delivered a perfect drive to this left-to-right sloping fairway. This hole, which plays as a par five for the Olympic members, may be the most difficult par four in championship golf. In his three previous rounds, Jansen had recorded a bogey and two double bogeys. This time would be different. Par at the 15th, Payne teed up at the par 5 16th, hoping to turn his tee shot around the right to left dog leg. But instead, he drilled it straight through the fairway and into the deep rough. Up ahead, Jansen faced a downhill 40 footer for his birdie. superb effort under the circumstances. Just a tap in for his par. Indeed, he almost made this 468-yard monster look easy. One hole left. And waiting at the final tee was one very interested spectator, Lee's father, Larry. While back at the par 5 16, the sand had once again snagged Payne Stewart, who faced this for his fourth shot. Jansen for his final approach with a wedge. And right on target, just as he had been all afternoon. To remain tied for the lead, Payne needed this one to fall. In 
instead, on a hole where he hoped to gain a shot, he would lose one. Jansen now wanting nothing worse than a two putt on perhaps the most treacherous green at Olympic. And so, with a final round of 68, Lee Jansen heads into the clubhouse with a 72 hole total of even par 280 and a one shot advantage. the script would be written by this man. He had survived 17 with a par, and now it was all down to one hole, where he needed a birdie three to force a playoff. And with that shot, he gave himself a chance. But no player in the previous 14 pairings on Sunday had managed a birdie at 18. So Jansen could only watch and wait as Payne made his way up to the amphitheater where the final scene of this drama would unfold. It had been a long and grueling week at the top for Team Stewart, but still, they hadn't lost their sense of humor as Payne set his sights on the most important 20-footer of his career. This to force a Monday playoff a miss, and Lee Jansen is the champion again. The pace was good, and so was the line, until the very last moment. And so Lee Jansen becomes the 18th player in history to win multiple U.S. Open titles. While for Kane Stewart, the result is bitterly reminiscent of Baltus Hall. Extremely tense, extremely emotional finish for everyone, and the impact would take a while to sink in. Jansen's comeback from five shots behind was the largest since Johnny Miller rebounded from six strokes back in 1973. David Duvall and Jeff Slubin were two of only six players to better par on Sunday, and along with Paul Azinger and Matt Kuchar, they earned exemptions in the next year's U.S. Open. Moments after his victory, the champion was asked why he valued the U.S. Open title above all others. Well, they only play it once a year, and it's contested on, I think, the hardest condition, of course, in the America, and it's the national championship. There's players from all over the world to come here and want to win it, but I think it's just that much more special for an American player. And uh, that's, that's what really feels special is it's national pride when you try and win the U.S. Open. And uh, it's the tournament you dream of winning from the time you're a kid. Jansen's joy and victory was tempered only by his compassion for the man he'd beaten for a second time. You know, he led the tournament the whole way, and he played great. He slept on the lead every night. And, uh... I know how hard that is to sleep on that lead and uh, play the golf he played. He's got some courage, and he really deserves something. I know he's not going to take the trophy home tonight, but he deserves it. He's a great, he's a great champion, whether he wants it or not. There's nothing like celebrating a win. Um, it's great when you got your friends here and your family. And uh, I would love to win a tournament. It would feel great to win a tournament, but to win the U.S. Open, it's just that much more special, especially the second one. Open title number two was the eighth victory of Jansen's career, his first win since 1995. I trade all my wins to win a U.S. Open. To win it once, I think uh, I, I'd love to see everybody win a major to see what it feels like if it's competing at the highest level. And then to win it twice, I know I just put myself in a special place. It's, it's really fantastic. 